Okay, we still have a few time to do some discussions with Tomineyi uh, from Vetiver Capital. For this week, let's look at these uh, sectors, the major sectors of the market. What can you tell us about the performance and what's your projection for next week? What, next week? what are the stocks that we should be watching? Yeah, I think uh, for this week, uh, given that we've not, we've not seen a lot of earnings from, from the market, especially from the big boys, I think uh, this week, and even the deadline to actually post earnings has passed to some extent. So we might see some rush in, in terms of posting earnings on the exchange. I think most investors will be keen on seeing what the banks will, would release, particularly from the tier two names. So the likes of Zenit, uh, Guarantee Access, UPA, the big boys general, and even in the industrial space, I think investors will be keen on seeing uh, what uh, Danksem and the rest will, will, will put out, even though some of these guys have actually uh, or giving notice to the market that earnings might come in a little bit later than expected. So, for example, Orlando Lafarge, they, they made some key announcements uh, last week that the earnings might be delayed than, than, than normal. Besides, I think the, 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 the entire market will still believe that we, are, we will see key names or uh, release the earnings into the market, and that will be a key driver What's for What's going on in the insurance space? Insurance space, uh, I think that's been very interesting. Yes, it has, because in the last two weeks it's been green. Uh, yeah, it, it's been green, and uh, although I think, uh, to be honest, it's been mixed to some extent. Mm. So you recall that uh, towards the, I think, early in the year, uh, so we had this adjustment to the floor price of stocks. Uh, okay. Right, no, before no, on the Nigerian oh, stock yeah. exchange, we had a floor. So of a lot of those bucks. nominal value trading stocks exactly. have so now been. Most investors have been stuck around the 50 cover for many years. They've been trying to exit their position for as low right. as possible. So if you look at that space currently, you see some stocks trading as low as 22. Okay, 20 Tomini, stock. let's quickly go on break. And when we come back, we will continue the discussion around supplies and total earnings that were released this week. Welcome back to the program. This is Capital Markets coming to you live on Channels Television. Now, this week we saw, uh, of course, it's earnings season and companies' results for 2017 are trickling in. But our focus uh, in this segment will be on the oil and gas earnings, total PLC and surplus, which were mainly uh, the key movers in the markets this week as a result of their numbers. Uh, for total, it reportedly had a 46% year-on-year uh, -year drop in full year 2017, uh, profit after tax was uh, 8 billion naira, translating to an earnings per share of 23.62 uh, billion naira. That's against uh, 43.58 billion naira that was recorded for the period in 2016. Uh, considering the challenging operating landscape in the Nigerian petroleum uh, downstream sector over the course of the year, this, has been this performance is find, uh, found quite impressive, uh, even as the reported EPS beat uh, estimates of uh, analysts at 18.95. Uh, uh, for Seplat, Seplat's uh, full year 2017 earnings showed strong performances across all the line items buoyed by um, continued militancy ceasefire in the Niger Delta region and leading to the lifting of the force majeure of Focado's terminal on June the 6th. That was also backed mainly by the tax credits that uh, that company had in the fourth quarter of the year. Now, Tomini Ramon, our analyst at Vitiva Capital, is still with us. You've been working on oil and gas uh, <laughs> earnings in the past few days. Yeah. Uh, so, if you make a choice between Seplat and Total, which would you want to start with? I think I'll go with a more impressive one, and that's, that's Seplat. Oh, so, Seplat, if you've been following Seplat's story over the years, there were some tough times, particularly mm -hmm. in 2016. Uh, it's not really, it, due to what everybody knows anyways, uh, so the Forcado's terminal was down uh, in 2016, so it was shut down for most of the year. Uh, they couldn't produce as of the main, so oil production was down. And so the bulk of 2016, uh, earnings were very, very, very down. So, um, and if you recall last year around June 6, uh, so it was announced that the Focado's terminal was open. So since then, SEPRA has been uh, pumping out crude uh, steadily. So that stability actually, uh, we saw that stability for the, for the bulk of the year from June down to December. And that really, really helped the full year numbers. So if you recall, uh, Q1 2017, they were still down in terms of earnings. Earnings, uh, earnings from operations directly was yeah. actually ne negative. And in Q2, just, uh, just because they were able to do for just uh, the month of June, they were able, uh, able to produce for the month of June. So we actually saw a uh, turnaround in operating earnings for Q2. And in Q3, Q4, where stability was, was at, at the peak. So we saw these same numbers from, from Seplat. Q3, Q4, they were very good. Yeah. And uh, in addition to that, so the uh, tax credit, just as you said, in, in Q4, which actually lifted uh, 
bottom line. Uh, just like 2016, however, uh, the, the company will not be paying out dividend this year, trying to recover from their losses. But I think uh, for the company in 2018, if everything remains stable, particularly in terms of oil production, mm. uh, I think it should be a good year for them. And we re remember that for oil price, uh, compared to last year, oil price right now year to date is around 26% higher year on year. So that's another upside for earnings in 20. So surplus came to market at about uh, 500 and something or yeah. 60 naira per share. Yeah. And you're now targeting a price of 970 something naira. How feasible is that? Uh, I mean, considering the fundamentals, uh, it, it is justified around that price. Uh, even, uh, it, it, there's one thing to note about Sellplat. Uh, after the production last year, yeah. uh, they were able to, so they, they announced that their reserves, their oil reserves actually grew 3% year on year. That's massive for any upstream company. That mm -hmm. After producing for the year, after producing about 36,000 barrels of oil for the full year, you're still able to revise your your reserves area for this. So that's, the, that's a key part of, of the valuation being reversed there. And also, oh, when they had troubles oh, in production, that was in 2016 and earlier part of 2017, mm -hmm. the operating cash flow of this company was close to being ne ne negative over the year. But since they started production, they've been able to recoup part of the operating cash flow, and that's also massive to the valuation. So I think right now it's, it's, fair, it's, it's a fair valuation having separate at 9 to 22. And uh, I think if, if oil price even go higher than what anybody expects, it's, it's my even now to... But is it really going to go higher? Everyone's thinking, I mean, it's, it's now hovering around $64, $65 per barrel. Yeah, uh, yeah but the, the, the outlook for me is, is a bit mixed. Um, the general expectation is, although we have it around 60 plus right mm -hmm. now, or it, it will, based on, based on estimates for oil watchers, it should most likely retrace back to the mid-50s, mid, mid 55, 56. But one thing you should know is that even at $55, where these guys are coming from, mm -hmm. it, it's quite low. Remember in 2016, uh, around January, oil price was as low as $27, $28 in 2016. So coming from that low down to, up to around 60 plus or even 55 is not really bad for for upstream companies generally. Okay, so before we lose our time, let's talk about total. I mean, resilience, but EPS, slums, and you still say it's still ahead of your estimates. For total, it, 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 it's a bit sad. I, I can't really say sad, a bit unfortunate for the sector. Uh, EPS was down, yeah, that's mm -hmm. true, about 50% year on year. But I mean, looking at the condition of this downstream sector over 2016 yeah. or even 2017, I think they, they, they did well to, to a large extent. We're even expecting a profit to come lower than that, uh, and they're able to do around eight billion in profit. Although coming down, yeah. coming down from sixteen billion that they did, yeah, in, we did, did in, in 2016. 2016. I mean, it, when we were in recession. recession, yeah. But I think oh, for Anali, most of that we were even expecting a profit to even come lower than the eight billion. They but that exactly what was going on in that sector, in that company, rather. Oh, it, it, it's not just about the content, it's about the sector as a whole. So right now, we all know that uh, PMS prices are actually regulated at 145 naira mm -hmm. per litre. So meaning that uh, even if your cost is as high as anything, uh, yeah. you can't increase your prices mm -hmm. by over the regulated price of 145. So what we've had uh, since the, uh, I think for the bulk of 2017 is the NMPC being the major supplier to, to, to these guys mm -hmm. at a uh, subsidized rate. So meaning that the margins at which 2,000 and other marketers can sell is actually fixed to a large extent. And another thing is uh, for a total and some of these independent guys, they, yeah. they also deal with lubricant. And since we've been seeing recovering oil prices, uh, mm -hmm. we've been seeing uh, increased cost for them because one of the key inputs for these guys for, to produce uh, uh, lubricant is base oil. So and base oil is directly gotten from crude oil. So if crude oil prices actually increase, tend to see that increase cascading to the price of base oil. So we've been seeing that pressure ma margins for total, not just total actually mm -hmm. for in the entire market. Also, as I said, oh, the, the result compared, when you look at it year on year, the, the, the decline is a bit uh, massive, but looking at it in the context, the context of what happened in the year 2017, it's not really a bad performance from total. And they were even able to sustain a record dividend of and they, yeah, of, exactly, of 17, 17 Naira, naira final of 14 Naira yeah, yeah, and total which, which, which is a bit naira. impressive from, from total. Yeah, so what's the upside right now, full liberalization and all that? Oh, as far as Inventiva, the, the outlook on the sector, it, it's not too positive. Uh, and, and, and there's why. One, oh, the expectation is oil price will remain uh, as high as, let's say, from $55 per barrel mm -hmm. upward. Trust me, if oil price comes uh, to that range for the rest of the year, 
there's no, I, I see no way landing cost will be will make any economic sense to all these guys. Or landing cost will most likely be above 145 naira per liter. So it won't make any sense for any benefit marketers to even import if you can't sell at uh, market prices. So what we are likely going to see going forward is NNPC continuing to be the sole importer of this product mm -hmm. and selling, uh, just rationing supply to, to Total and the rest of the payment marketers. So margins will be capped going forward. That's for the PMS side. Uh, for the lubricant side, oh, just as I said, the, the margins will most likely be pressured as well, given that crude prices are expected to remain higher. And there's a limit, to, even though lubricants are not regulated, I mean the price, there's a limit to how you, as a seller, can just increase price if you don't want to alt your, your volumes. So many Ramon, thank you so much for coming on board. We appreciate your time on Capital Market and we do hope to have you again on yeah. the show. Appreciate your time. So many name Ramon is a head a research analyst at Vetiver Capital Management. Hopefully you become the head someday. It's not <laughs> too far from you. you. Well, on that note, that's the program. That's all we have for you this evening. Thanks for watching. I'm Temple Ashaju again. I'll see you next time.